Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. All right, my friends. So I was racking my brain trying to decide what type of video to film today. Um, and you know, normally I do my oddly specific recs. I have my kinky recs. I have my, um, you know, weekly wrap ups and I just, I couldn't settle on a particular topic or thing I wanted to do today. So, I mean, based on the title, you'll know, I mean, there kind of is a topic, but I decided I just wanted to do, you know, maybe we'll call it like random kinky books or whatever, but I just decided to go through my list of books that I've read. Um, probably I think it's in like the last calendar year or, so, or in the last like year or so and just pick like a different kink um, and do like a book rec for, you know, a, a different, I don't even know what to call it, like I said. So I think I'm just going to call this like 10 random kinky books you need to read. I don't know what we'll end up titling it. We'll find something. Um, so yeah, I have, I actually have more than 10 here, but I have these books that I, some of their kinks overlap, but I'm going to highlight, I think, a different one in each one. So maybe this is like a taste testing or like a, a, a kinky uh, taste tester or whatever. Um, I will say most of these are dark romance, so just keep that in mind. A lot of times when you are going to go for kinky, it usually gets put into dark. It shouldn't always have to. I do have a couple exceptions, but most of these are going to be dark, so just know that. But uh, yeah, and there are going to be different levels of it too. So still for each one, check your trigger warnings yourself. Most of these authors will have them listed somewhere, but I'm not going to probably get in too much individually to them. But we're just going to go through this list. And I mean, I can say that this first one I'm going to talk about is probably what's what sparked me to, to make this video. Because there's this author that She's not completely new to me. I read some of her stuff uh, last year, um, but I just had read like one series by her. I didn't realize, number one, the depth of her backlist, and number two, that her brand actually is like everyday people with kink and exploring kink and like normal like small town romance or like contemporary romance. Um, and that's her brand. And that, of course, is Daisy Jane. I've been talking about her a lot in recent wrap-ups, listening to her audiobooks. She does narrate most of her own audiobooks in duet fashion, and that's been really fun. I've been listening to some uh, advanced listener copies of her books, and I just think they're amazing. And she does do that. Like, she will just have, you know, kind of like a regular good old small town romance themes in a book. And she will have these characters be interested in different types of kink and showing you how, um, not that there shouldn't always be a safe word, but how there isn't always some elaborate setup for how kinks get put in. And not just kinks that are spanking or, or you know, praise and degradation or even bondage, like those get put in a lot of romance. We know that, you know, it's been the rise of the good girl. It just gets kind of put in everything or, you know, spanking her because she like upset you or did something bad. Like the, that just gets thrown into a lot of stuff. And I am all here for it. I'm okay with that. You know, I'm okay with the good girl with the spank. Like I'm good. I'm here for it. I, I appreciate it. Um, but she goes a little bit further with some of hers. And so I could have you know, someday maybe I'll be able to do a deep dive on her. I am working my way through her backlist, so that may be coming. But the one, as I said, that really pushed me to make this video is All My Love by, da by Daisy Jane. And this book isn't out yet. It comes out next week. And I just read an arc of this one, and it had some kinks that I really like and one also that I haven't seen outside of a, uh, I mean, I think I read it in a fan fiction, but otherwise I like haven't seen this even mentioned outside of like an adult website somewhere. And even on an adult website, it's uh, definitely not what I would choose to be watching. So this book, let's start with it. This is a big age gap. Um, it's an 18 year age gap and we have a female stalker. She's also the neighbor to this single dad who he's 38, she's 20. 
Um, he's a single dad. I think his kid's like five, four or five years old. He's young. He's adorable. We love him. This hero is a cowboy. He is uh, just this rough and rugged, sexy guy. And his wife, the mother of his child, had cheated on him with his best friend. And so he hasn't really tried to uh, dabble with uh, any ladies too much since then. And he's lived next door to uh, Dolly and her two sisters since uh, for like five years. So Dolly has been obsessed with him for five years since she was 15. Now, because he is an older man than her, again, an 18 year gap between them, and he is a good dude, she knew that he was not going to show any interest in her until she was old enough that he wouldn't feel, you know, like a perv, like let's call it what it is. So she has bought her time. And even when she was 18, she knew like that's still too young. So I like that about her that she's a bit aware that, you know, he's not going to feel comfortable just jumping into bed with a girl this young. He's, he, because he's a good man and he, you know, hasn't looked at her that way, it's going to take some convincing. But uh, she has some serious obsessive tendencies with him and the things that she does, the way that she learns everything about him. I'm not going to spoil that for you, but it is extreme. It's extreme. But her like stalking, she never puts him in danger or his kid in danger or um, even though the things she does, you will find questionable. They're not stalking in the sense of like you're never afraid for him and his son you're never worried she's gonna go all like psycho on them she just is obsessed and believes he's the only one for her okay so that's gonna be that the kink that I want to bring up that was in this one it, this one actually has two that are some of my favorites um this one has cock warming in it which y'all know is a fave of mine she really likes to um use it as a like pacifying uh, situation, not in a like daddy kink way, just it helps her to calm down, to um, be in that like submissive pose and to be um, holding him in her mouth. Okay. See, it's even difficult for me to talk about these sometimes you guys, but I did a whole video on cock warming. I could do this. That also happens in some other books that I love. Uh, but it was very like the way that she talks about it, like, oh God, it's so hot. You guys like you just squirming, but it's also just so sexy because <laughs> once they're finally together, which again, I'm, you know, it's a romance, so it's not like that's a spoiler, but also I don't want to spoil things. But once they're together, um, she, uh, says to him, like, I want you, I earned you. I want you all the time. Like, it's just, it's crazy. So there's that. The other thing is there is a sex scene in here that has fisting. Even saying that out loud is like hard for me. Like I get the chills saying it. Like I said, that's the thing that I have only ever even like seen in on an adult website. I, I again, I think I read it in a fan fiction. I think there was one of the like super like erotic ones that that was in there. But and at the same time, too, the way that Daisy Jane writes it is so hot that you're in the moment with them and you're like, oh my God, this is going to happen. And the hero is even like, I don't want to hurt you. I don't think we should do this. And she's like, I can do it. I can take you. <laughs> it's hot. Okay. So anyway, that is a random like kink uh, slash sexual act that I did not know I was into, and I'm not saying I am like into it now, but I'm saying I read it and it worked for this couple. So um, I will put a link to the pre-order for this one. It comes out next week and it is wild. I'm just telling you, it's very kinky, very crazy. It's the first one in the Twisted Sisters. So that's the other part is like her sisters know that she's obsessed with him and they kind of like approve of it. So, cause otherwise she wouldn't be able to get away with some of the stuff she does um, if her sisters weren't okay with it. But as I said too, uh, All My Love is written like a small town romance because it's not a dark stalker. Like it's not dark the way that she stalks him. So that one is really a small town romance where she's a stalker and once they get, and it's even a slow burn because she has to like convince this man that they should be together. So once they're together, they go from zero to 1,000 in the, like, spice department, but it is a slow burn for both of them. 
Anyway, okay, this other one, I wouldn't consider this one too dark either, but it is a monster romance. So this one, um, the two kinks that I really wanted to suggest from this one are pegging and primal play. I really love both of those. And so the one I'm recommending for this is Howl for the Gargoyle by Catherine Moon. This is book two in the Monster Smash series. See, this is why I accidentally grabbed the wrong one. This is the first one, which this one also has some great kinks in it. But uh, you can read them out of order. They don't connect that much. It's um, about monster sex workers. So the orc, he is a sex worker and the gargoyle, he's a sex worker. And this one is about a female werewolf and she is now super horny when she's a wolf, but she can hurt humans if she is to have sex with a human male. And so she gets suggested by one of her friends to use the monster smash agency to get paired with a monster who she can't hurt them when she is being more strong. And so she gets paired with our hero who is Rafe, and he actually has been kind of bad at his job lately. He hasn't been getting the best, um, like, referrals and everything like that, and so he's not really sure if he should continue doing this job, and then he gets paired with Hannah, and they go from there, and so he's actually um, willing to be, like, submissive to her, too, so when she, you know, is feeling her, like, werewolf urges, he's really happy to have her, you know, like, chase him in the primal play part, or there is some scenes of like pegging and everything too. And again, because he is made of stone and he can like turn to stone, like he can have a fleshier skin and he can turn to stone, like things can get really wild between them. But this was actually a very sweet romance between the two of these. And again, this one doesn't get quite as dark as some of the others we'll talk about either. I'm already talking for a very long time and that was the first two. But some of these books I've talked about more than others, so I won't have to get into as much detail. So next we do have a fanfic, and this is the one that also has cockworming in it. Um, but we'll talk about something else too. So this is Coming Undone by One Equal Temper. Um, I don't have a picture of this one anymore because um, there isn't a cover for this one. But this is a Sirius and Hermione, and this is a BDSM romance, and Hermione um, accidentally pops into Grimald Place when Sirius is having a scene with one of his uh, um, bottoms that will come by, or not bottoms, she is the bottom, one of the subs that he will partner with comes by, and she's very intrigued by what she sees. And so the next time she sees Sirius, they kind of talk about what she saw, and he explains like, yes, there's people that will come to see me, they enjoy being put into like subspace and I do that for them and help them just like rest their mind. And this is something that's very attractive to Hermione because she's very stressed out at work, she gives herself a very hard time and so having someone, having a dom possibly like order her to do that might be good for her. So first they start off as it not being anything sexual, it's just he's going to help her go to that place and in this, because it is a fan fiction, subspace has almost this like deeper meaning to it. It's almost a magical subspace where you really can like get lost in it a little bit. So it's also something that you have to have a very wise dominant who puts you in and takes you out of it. So there's a lot straight up about like BDSM that is explained very well in this. But two of the kinks I really like are, as I said, there's cock warming in here. It's used in a really like cool way. Like I love it so much. And then there is also restrictions used. And so I wanted to share this one as kind of a unique kink. So someone say too that these can be like rules for a kink relationship. You might see these in 24-7 dynamics, which I'm not always a huge fan of. But they can be things that help the sub be focused in the moment because you have to focus on not breaking the restrictions. So these can be things as simple as like don't look the dom in the eye for a certain amount of time or um, don't speak for this amount of time, only if you have to say your safe word. Or it can be that, um, you know, there could be ones where, like, you have to hold the dominant's hand during a period. So those are just a few examples of it, but they're all different restrictions that can be put on to help a sub, like, get into that space and help them let go of the burdens that they have by trusting the dominant to put them into that space and bring them out when it's time. So... There are, again, also many other kinks in that one. There's some good magical ones. There's some bindings. There's, as I said, the cockworming. There's toys and stuff. But that's one that I feel like doesn't get brought up too much 
because I mean by me anyway because I don't love reading 24 7 dynamics I it's not my favorite thing um, I like there to be like playtime and then not and often that's as I said when restrictions are put in place um, it's not the only time and we're gonna get to some other ones but I, I liked how that one went okay next we have Madam by Sarah Kate so this one also has pegging in it but it also has like two female doms kind of situation or like obviously um Eden in this one um she actually gets um okay let me say this so her ex is in a relationship with a new woman in this one um her name I can't remember her name let me look it up what's the new lady's name I forgot it. Clay is the hero's name. Come on. Give me the other person. Wow, we're really not getting the other person. Clay and Jade. Oh my god, I couldn't find it. Um, and when they like run into her again, Jade is very intrigued by Eden, who is basically a professional like dominatrix slash like dom with a you know female dom and she works at the club that she uh well she's not one of the owners right she works at the club and she has been a long-term person there and she used to be in a relationship with clay but he wanted things to be more serious and to be with her long term and she's like i'm not willing to do that that's not where i'm gonna go with it now it's been a little while and again he's in a relationship with jade they run into Eden and Jade can tell there's something going on and so when she learns from Clay what the relationship was Jade is very interested so she actually goes to see um to see blah blah blah, blah, uh, blah Eden and ask her about the things she used to do with Clay and of course Eden isn't just going to tell her because she's like I'm not gonna out things that we did to you but but Jade is like, but he liked the things you did to him, right? And she's like, well, yeah. And she's like, I want to learn how to dom him in a way that he'll like as well. And so this one becomes kind of a like, teach me how to do it scenario, which eventually leads to them being in an FMM. So this one I have, as I said, for female dom, but also with there being like two female doms. That's not usually something you see. There usually will be two men who do it, or they'll be like the woman is over both of them. But in this case, she can dom both of them, but also like Jade will too. And they end up in an HEA together. So this one also has pegging, as I said, which is, of course, very, very fun to experience. All right, then we have a little bit of a darker one here. Well, I mean a lot darker. <clears throat> we have God of Ruin, and this one is book four in Rena Kent's Legacy of the God series. It will say in the cover of each of these books, it will say this is a complete standalone, blah, blah, blah. I don't personally think you should read this as a standalone that's how I feel about the books in this series because they're going on at the same time and we're building upon each other. And the reason why you're so excited to get to this book is because you've seen this character in the previous books. He's kind of like, I mean, there isn't a full-on villain in the series. They all have villainous tendencies. They're all bad boys going on. But he definitely feels more villainous than others because he's much more like chaotic villainy, you know. But he becomes obsessed with Mia um, and Mia is actually mute. She's speechless by choice based on some trauma that she'd been through. And so she does use sign language, which was kind of cool. Um, but uh, she catches his eye and that might not be the best thing in the world for her. Might be, um, in fact, kind of a risk that she caught his eye. But uh, she becomes his muse. And so she wants or he wants her to be around him so he can get his artist mojo back type of thing but anyway the the kinks in this one that I really love is a kink that I really enjoy is somnophilia which if you don't know again I do have a whole video on this and this is sex when someone is sleeping now this can be a consensual non-consent thing uh, because someone can agree to it beforehand right in fact something you might not know 
any book you read where the hero or the heroine wakes up to their partner going down on them, that is technically somnophilia, and it is technically not consensual if they didn't talk about it before. Even if you're in the relationship with someone and you wake up to someone sexually touching you like that, so often it's put in contemporary books as like it's a sexy thing, but that actually is a non-consensual thing. You know, what if that partner has trauma? and they wake up to you, you know, giving them fellatio or cunnilingus, and they didn't, you know, consent to it. But anyway, that's when it's in the contemporary, and it just gets blown over by so many authors. I actually recently just read it in a book where someone did it, and they say, the author wrote, like, we had already said it, we were cool with this. So, like, they had talked about it beforehand, and I was like, that's all you have to do. You just have to put it in there. But it's not always great to be like, hello, surprise, I'm touching you sexually in the morning, and maybe you don't want that, right? But anyway, when it's somnophilia in a dark romance, it's most likely a dubious consent or non-consensual thing anyway. But there are some scenes in here where Mia has some bad dreams and for some reason he thinks it's a good idea to uh, have sex with her while she's doing that. He's a villain, so this is not the same as those other ones I was talking about. Um, there also is some breath play and some other more twisted things in here, but Somnophilia is one that I have read it as well in darker romances where the hero might drug the heroine. Um, or I mean, we shouldn't even say hero, like the, the MC will drug the FMC. Um, and so that those are other ways that somnophilia can happen as well. But uh, yeah, that's the kink that like stood out in this one for me, because it is a kink that I enjoy reading. Um, and it feels very, very taboo when someone's dreaming and you're having that situation with them. Okay, Next, we have Minx by Sophie Lark, and I bet you can guess which one I'm going to say for this one. <laughs> this has pet play in it, and it has pet play in a way that I did find very sexy. So, um, I've shared with some of you, I don't talk about this all the time, but there are a few kinks that I myself don't enjoy reading, and they're ones that I won't be making dedicated videos to, because to make a dedicated video, I have to read many of that kink to find ones that I would even recommend, right? It's why I haven't made videos for a few other kinks that I do like because I haven't found enough books of, that I do like to recommend, if that makes sense. Because sometimes there's a kink I really love, but I've only read it in two or three books that I like. It might be in other books, but I don't like them. And I don't like to make a video unless I have at least, at least six recommendations. Anyway, long story short, there are a few kinks that I feel that way about and Pet play is one of them. If you're wondering, severe age play where there's actually littles and daddy doms, I don't do either. I like daddy kink. I don't like DDLG much at all. It's, it's very difficult for me. As well as, um, ironically enough, <laughs> which I haven't come across it too much, but a few other things like forced piercings and stuff like that. Anyway, sidetrack. Pet play is one of those that I don't love. Okay. I don't like when it goes too serious. However, the way that Sophie touches on it in this one between this escort, Blake, and the billionaire who wants to make her his, Ramsey's, he is trying to intrigue her sexually, which is difficult with an escort who's pretty much done everything. And so they kind of play this like game where he's like, I'm going to surprise you with something you've never done before. And so he buys her this skin tight cat suit and gets her to become minx, which is something that they both collectively, so you can see kind of the skin tight suit she's wearing, they both kind of collectively sink into and they find a lot of freedom in the persona of minx and her owner, right? And also there isn't anything like too like petty, like pet play. I don't know whether to say that. Like one that I absolutely hated, there was one where she actually was put away in a cage at the end and like had to eat out of a bowl and stuff. And I just was like, that was a different book. That's not this one. And it made me like ill because that kink wasn't for me. I didn't like it. This one, she mostly only is a cat like for like for cuddles and for there is a scene with milk that he drips off of his cock into her mouth. It's already symbolism for like come anyway, so it doesn't. Mm. And then, you know, just him praising her a lot. And there is also a reverse pet play that happens in here as well that was just, it blew my mind. It was so good. So 
I just found this one very powerful. And if you're someone who you think you would be creeped out by pet play as well, I highly recommend this one because Sophie really takes, you know, kind of the care to explain the headspace of the people for doing it and what it does for them. And it is another case of like, it's just another layer to a sub-dom relationship where, you know, instead of it even just being like the dom is taking the situation from your shoulders and letting you relax, it's like, well, you're a pet. What does a pet have to worry about? What does a cat have to worry about? A cat just worries about, you know, cleaning itself and looking pretty and wanting its dinner and wanting cuddles, you know, like that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, a, it's another layer into a subspace where you don't have any worries in your world at all. You've just focused on the pleasure and, and being this cat, right? This one also has period sex in a beautiful scene that was really great in here. So yeah, there's some spicy fun stuff in here for sure. Okay, then we have Denial by Ali Marr. And again, you can maybe guess by this title what this one is. So this was a recent release and this is a small indie author who I absolutely love. And this one is a novella actually about a married couple and it's about orgasm denial. And I like this because it's a couple who's been together a long time. It is um, basically, the, the author has come out and say, she doesn't say it in the book, but on her social, she said that the characters are in their 50s. They've been together for 30 years and they're in a long-term dom-sub relationship and the heroine is the dom. And they're happy. They love each other. Again, they've been in this a very long time. But things are feeling a little stale and they want to try something new. And so the sub, he actually wants to wear a chastity device, so a cock cage, and have her own his orgasms. Now, they've done this before. You know, it's something they've done plenty of times. But there's always been an end date in mind. And the heroine, she's like, since we're really trying something new, I don't want to tell you when the end date will be. Like, I'm going to choose when the end date will be. So you don't have something to look forward to, someday to wait for. I'm going to own your orgasm for an infinite amount of time. Like, I'm not going to tell you when it is. And so this really brings like a new level to their relationship and, you know, proving how much he trusts her and the bond that they have. And it was, it was very emotional and it was also very beautiful. So definitely this does go to the edge of this. Like there is some uncomfortable scenes where you just feel like kind of squirmy about it, you know? But it was also really beautiful in this married couple and how much they trust each other. Now, there is also a scene at the very end and I do want to spoil it because it is, this is actually one of the things that's normally a no-no for me, okay? I've DNF'd books for this before. Uh, but the author had told me that, you know, I told, she knew that this was a deal and it's in the epilogue of the novella. So you don't have to read it if you don't want to. And it doesn't take anything away from the story. The hero actually wants to be branded by the heroine. He wants more than just a collar. He wants more than that. He wants a branding. And there are ways you can get this done. And it's something the heroine has always denied before because sure she might like her subs pain she might appreciate the gesture but she just thinks that it is too much and so anyway as i work through this story that is something that happens in that blog and i did read it and i did love it because after going through the journey with the characters i knew what it meant to this hero and why he wanted it and the times when it has been a dnf for me is I have read forcible branding before. Um, happens in the Adelaide Force series, and it's why I've never finished that series because I don't enjoy force tattooing, piercing, or branding. Now, there have been some forcible tattooings that I've been okay with. Dom being one of them has it, and I actually <laughs> thought it was kind of charming what he does. But in general, I don't appreciate body modifications without permission. I'm just... Even in dark romance, it's like too much for me. But in this case, it was a consensual body modification. Like he was asking for it. So I ended up like reading that and liking it and being like, oh, wow, that was really powerful. So if you yourself don't think you want to read that, you can still read this novella and then just be like, they have a happily ever after. Like they're together. It's great. 
Okay, then I will share Secret Obsession. Um, this is book three in the Hockey God series, and it's actually the first one that I read. I have read books one, two, and three. I still want to read books four and five. I did just get book four the other day from um, Barnes & Noble, so I do want to continue the series, but I've read books one, two, and three. This one is a brother's ex-girlfriend romance, and actually at the beginning of this book is when um, the girl breaks up with his brother. Now, the thing about it too that like makes it kind of work is that his brother was really only dating her on a dare anyway. And so the hero in this one, whose name is Miles, he has just been waiting for his brother to stop messing around with his woman um, so that she can finally be his. So when that opportunity finally comes, he's like, I'm done waiting. I, I had to watch you with my brother for almost a year and he isn't even serious about you like you're mine. I'm serious about you. And boy, does he prove that he's serious about her. Holy crap. These books always surprise me because there always is this little bit that actually is very, like, there's like a dark part to it. Um, so like one of these involves like there's a murder that happens there's a death that happens we're trying to cover it up and then we have leverage to hold over someone because we like killed someone for them so it's a whole thing but it gets dark so the ones in this one that i want to share is this one has some of the really like darker kinks right this one has blood play knife play and breathing now knife play and blood play usually go hand in hand right like sometimes you can just you know pretend with a knife use like the backside or use a fake one or whatever um but sometimes it usually is going together with it um but i think i've made one about knife plate now i don't remember it'll be in the list if it is but i definitely have made two different breeding recommendations you guys really like those so i definitely have two full videos that have those in it but this is what i'm recommending for knife play blood play um it has those in it for sure Okay, then we have this one. The next two actually are a bit lighter ones after some of those like darker ones we had. Um, there is Megan by Rebecca Weatherspoon. This was a recent release and it was actually her finally continuing a series she started years ago. And this one is a, it starts off as a fake dating or like a dating deal. Megan is actually, I keep saying me, I have never heard it spoken out loud, but it's M-E-E-G-A-N, and to me that'd be Megan, but maybe it's just another way to say Megan. I've literally never heard someone say it out loud. So in my head, she's Megan, and I'm sorry if that is making you cringe because it's totally wrong. Sorry. But anyway, um, Megan is a teacher, and her friend is friends with this billionaire. I think his name is Owen. I think that's his name. And he needs a fake girlfriend to get all the society ladies off his back because he's always getting like harassed at these different events. He goes, because they just really want a piece of him, right? He's this eligible billionaire. He's good looking. So he also is on the autism spectrum. And so he's not the nicest either. So he needs someone who won't get offended if he's a little too blunt and also will be his fake girlfriend. So his friend suggests Megan, who she, I believe is, I can't remember if this is during the summer or like when it is when they first start this, but I think she's off from school for a little while when they start. But either way, I can't remember. I know she is teaching at some point in this, but I don't remember when it starts or whatever. But they get paired up and they start this as a fake dating situation. Now, pretty soon into it, they realize they really have real chemistry with each other. And he asks her if she would be his real girlfriend. And she likes him as well. She thinks he's, you know, she likes his differences and she likes the way his mind works and how blunt he is. She likes that. But she informs him of her lifestyle and the type of lifestyle that she's lived before. So she was actually in a long-term um, polyamorous uh, submissive dynamic with a few people. There was a main like dom and there was a couple and then there was like three or four other people who were like a part of this polyamorous knot or whatever it is. And it's only recently that everybody in there kind of paired up and she was the one left out. And so she still does crave to be in those scenarios. She likes public sex. She likes being shared by people. Um, and she is a pleasure submissive. So she likes her dom to just shower her with pleasure and tease her and all these good things. Okay. 
And so she explained that to him and she's like, that's not for everybody. It's not that I don't want to be like monogamous in like the dating part, but she's like, I do like to have sex with multiple people and I would prefer a partner who would be okay with it because I don't want to give that up. She also explains that she's a submissive and she likes that. And so he actually asks her very kindly, he's like, well, would you teach me more about it? Because I'm not saying I wouldn't like it. I just am not as well versed in this besides like porn, you know? And so she's like, okay, sure. So she actually starts introducing him into this world. So that's the setup of it. The main um, kinks that I would like to put forward in this one is this one definitely has some stuff at a sex club and it has sharing and it has it done in a way that's like really hot. So the hero himself doesn't really care to be involved in those, but he will like watch it and direct it sometimes. So, and he's willing to give that to her as like a gift. And something I also loved is that even though she's not in the full-time relationship with the other people, like they still come to play sometimes. And they also come there to help teach Owen how to, you know, discipline her and to how to please her. And it's just, and I love that he doesn't let his ego get in the way of that. He just wants to learn how to please her the best and see if they work. This also has a really intense scene of him having a like sensory overload. He has kind of a, a moment with his autism and I really appreciated how that was handled and how uh, Rebecca did that. So yeah, public play and a pleasure sub are ones in here, public, public play and sharing. Okay, then we have another lighter one as well that this one is another fan fiction. This one is actually a Sense and Sensibility fan fiction. Um, and this is a uh, Mary, Marianne and Colonel Brandon. So the beginning of this book starts out as kind of just a modern retelling of Sense and Sensibility. Um, he and this one is like a businessman. And Marianne's older sister um, is actually like his secretary. And so he meets Marianne when they have a, Eleanor's older sister, when they have a like company picnic and he meets her. And of course she's like 20 years younger than him and really beautiful. And she's not interested in him at all. And then he kind of convinces her to go on like a date with him. And then she meets a young gym bro named Willoughby. And she completely is like, well, I'm not interested in this older man anymore. And then when that falls apart, as it inevitably does, he is there to scoop up the pieces. So again, that is like the first half of this. And it's a really like slow burn and it follows the sense and sensibility part for a while. Then once they begin their relationship is when things get hot and steamy. Okay. So this one, why I wanted to recommend is because they do a lot of role plays and I just loved seeing that. Like they would come up with these really fun scenarios for each other. They would switch sometimes. So there isn't, you know, either one of them that has to be dominant all the time. They enjoy switching. One time she actually dresses like a dominatrix and like bosses him around a little bit. And we just get to see their life where they um, do all these different things together. It's super hot. And yeah, there is a ton of role plays in this one. So that is the like kink I want to put forward. Then we have one other light one and then one more dark one. So another one is Hideaway Heart. So this one isn't overly kinky, right? This is a small town romance. This is a bodyguard romance and also like vacation. We're locked up in a cabin together. Um, so Xander gets asked to watch over Kelly, who she is actually a country music star and she just wants a weekend away but it's like there are going to be people coming after her trying to get photographs of her and spy on her because she's famous and she can't think she can escape the limelight forever so um her brother is friends with Xander and um asks her to keep an eye on him or asks him to keep an eye on her so at first she's super reluctant to have him there but then she understands what like why she needs to be protected and agrees to it so eventually once they start being spicy together there are a couple pretty fun scenes in here. Now, it is Melanie Harlow. It is still a small town romance, so it doesn't get crazy. But this one actually has some scenes of CNC in it where she's like, I want you to like force me in this, which I was like, Melanie Harlow, look at you, girl, look at you. And it also has some primal play stuff where it's like running through the woods. I'm going to catch you kind of stuff. So just want to have a lighter option in here. If you want to start tippy toe into it, start with this one before you move on to maybe one of these heavier ones, you can definitely go with this one. 
And now, finally, this video ended up being longer than I thought. I love it. Let's do the last one here. And this one has a kink that I haven't really found too much more of that it wasn't a super, super dark romance. Like, this is a dark romance, but it still has some guardrails up. Like, it's not too over the top. And so this is Twisted Hearts by Jagger Cole. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I gave this one five stars. And this one is actually, the kink in this one is free use. So that doesn't get used too often. Again, it's usually in like a master slave scenario, but free use is basically as it sounds. Um, basically the submissive person just has to be ready to be fucked or touched or ordered around at any time. They, you know, don't wear their panties. She is his assistant working around. He can fuck her whenever he wants. Now, the way they got into this scenario is that the heroine in this one is Eilish and the hero in this one, let me see, it's been a little while, hot minute, is Gavin. And she has, is supposed to be initiated into this like sorority or something or this secret society. And she is supposed to steal this like artifact. And it ends up being the place she's stealing it from is from Gavin. And so this, she gets caught and also then it gets broken. And now this item, he was needing to pay off a debt and she broke it. And he's so pissed about it. But she is the daughter of the Irish, uh, like, organized crime as well. So he can't just take this out on her. And he also thinks she's super sexy. Um, so he forces her to work for him to pay off this debt and also to be his sex toy, basically. Now, there's some super hot scenarios in this. You know, we're in the office. There's her um, on a ladder, like, putting stuff away and he could do whatever. But yes, this one has free use. And this one also has some punishments and things like that in this one. So definitely a way to look at that kink without it being fully with no guardrails. Like he makes it seem very like dark with it and everything. But at the end of the day, the way that like these are set up is like if she honestly truly didn't want it, she could get out of it, right? She could tell her brother about it, um, one of her brothers, her uncle about it. And she doesn't because she is kind of intrigued. You know, it's that kind of thing. So there we go. I hope you will try some of these kinky books. I have links to everything down below if you want to check them out. Again, if you liked some of these I talked about, you can go check out this playlist where I have, again, pretty much all of these have their own video if you want more. So yeah, this I guess is like a kinky taste test or teaser or whatever to see what you might be interested in. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.